All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here today. Just getting started. Oh, my goodness. So much going on in the chat here already. Uh, first pops up. Hey, Mona. So good to have you here. I'm really looking forward to today's discussion as well. Uh, if everybody can hit the like button on your way in, uh, subscribe if you if you haven't already. Um, just, oh my gosh, already so much going on. Hi, Jason. Jason says, can't wait for this one. Uh, want to compare it to my ex-wife who wouldn't do what the therapist she picked wanted and then walked out. Uh, Nick, very excited to hear today's message. Oh, thank you for all you're doing for good men and women. You are welcome. I, I love what I get to do. And I'm so grateful for you guys to be such an amazing audience. Hi, Troy. Good to have you here as always. Hi, Mel. Uh, all right. Hi, Steve. Always good to have you. All right. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, Kelly says, a good afternoon uh, from sunny. I from Canada. I'm not even going to try that. Uh, I have a chicken egg question. Which came first, the woman manipulating her husband or the woman manipulating her therapist? Great, great question. Uh, we are, we're going to get into that. Um, hi, April. Thanks for being here. Your first live. Excited to have you here. Uh, Iron, I love your work so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You're very, very welcome. All right, guys, we're going to get started. Uh, I will look through the chat. Uh, at the end, I do my best. It's just me here today. So I will just see if anything pops out at the end of the chat uh, that would be helpful uh, to address and, and any questions. So if you have specific questions for me, it's always best to save them for the end uh, and put them in at the end. Uh, I won't get to all of them, but I, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll look through and pick, pick a couple that would be helpful or, or that grab my eye and let's, let's get started. So today we are talking about does marriage counseling work? And for me, it's definitive. No. And we're going to get into the why, uh, a reminder. I always like to do this at the beginning of my live shows, a reminder, uh, that this video and all of my videos on my channel are not intended for couples in severely dysfunctional and abusive relationships. Uh, my message is for women and good men who have normal, common, everyday issues you would expect your neighbor to have behind closed doors. Um, and if you are listening to this video and you are a man or a woman in a physically abusive relationship or severely dysfunctional relationship, it is best that you work with a licensed or trained professional that specializes in domestic abuse. So with that being said, why I want to talk about why marriage counseling doesn't work and who that message is for, uh, this week I got an email. I got an email from a licensed, uh, a licensed marriage and family therapist uh, that expressed her concerns to me because of a couple she is working with who the man in the, in the relationship and the marriage is watching my videos and the wife asked the therapist to watch my videos. Uh, and she reached out to me again, expressing her concerns. And so I thought it would be helpful to do a video for good men and women who are being, well, for good men <laughs> who are being asked or being dragged to couples counseling by their wife. Um, and, and, and look at three reasons why it doesn't work. And we're going to go further and further down the rabbit hole as we get into those three reasons. So please stick around for the whole episode. So I want to remind you guys that part of the title for the Happy Wife School is the red pill for women. And what I mean by that is for us as women, like I was in my marriage, to be exposed to the truth of our poor behaviors and emasculation of our husbands, meaning making them bad and wrong, shaming them and brainwashing them into believing they are the problem in the marriage, that the red pill is to awaken to the truth of our behaviors and how we show up so that we can have an awakening and we can change. And my channel is also for good men who are stuck in these patterns with their wife and have thought that they are crazy and what they experience. And my hope for all of you is that you are validated that 
you are not crazy and that what you're experiencing is real. And so I like the idea and and of the red pill and red pill versus blue pill that comes from the movie, The Matrix. And I have my own definition of The Matrix, which is an interwoven ideology that seems like reality, but is not actually based in truth. An interwoven ideology that seems like reality, but is not actually based in truth. And from this perspective and what I'm going to teach today, marriage counseling is part of the matrix. Marriage counseling is part of the matrix of an interwoven ideology that seems true, but isn't actually based in truth. So today I want to talk about the truth because truth breaks us out of our cognitive dissonance and breaks us out of the alternate reality that we live in when we buy into ideologies or we're brainwashed by ideologies that are not actually based in the truth of life. So let's get into the very first reason, just getting right in today. The first reason that marriage counseling does not work for good men and women in normal everyday relationships facing the issues that I talk about. The first reason why it doesn't work is what I like to call the psychology of relationships. We need a different perspective on how relationships work because what we have been taught in our culture, what marriage counseling reinforces is not the truth of how relationships work. We have been indoctrinated into believing that marriage and relationships are 50-50, that each person needs to show up doing their 50% to make the other person happy or feel the way that person wants to feel in the relationship. And then the other person needs to do their 50% to make the other person feel good in the relationship and do what they need to do to get their needs met. And from my perspective and what I know and have lived in my marriage and what I work with other men and women on is that 50-50 approach that marriage counseling enables and is the whole perspective and basis of marriage counseling is that that is based on codependency. I need you to be X, Y, and Z for me to feel good in the relationship and vice versa, which keeps us very trapped and is why marriage counseling doesn't work because it is based on the other partner needing to change for the other person to feel good and safe and secure in the relationship. So I teach a different perspective and this is what has radically changed, not only changed my marriage, but has radically changed every relationship that I have in my life without those people ever having changed, just me changing. So how I define the psychology of relationships is that relationships are a reflection of our internal emotional state. Our relationships are a reflection of our internal emotional state which creates the lens through which we see the relationship. And when we're talking about the dynamics between women and good men, as women, we all know that we live in, in, in an internal emotional storm. We live in an internal emotional storm inside of us. And it, that storm is created from my perspective and what I teach and what I have lived from our own unhappiness of how we feel about ourselves internally. And that emotional storm creates the lens of which we see our marriage to our good man. Our internal emotional state as women of being unhappy is we don't feel enough. We are highly critical of ourselves. We beat ourselves up. Uh, we are constantly wearing a facade to the outside world of who we think we need to be to be liked, accepted, and validated for who we are. We worry constantly. And as women, we have a, a very strong sense that there is something wrong with us. We feel because we watch ourselves do the same behaviors over and over again, and we don't change. We have a deep experience of feeling wrong. And that being our internal emotional state, that creates the lens of which we see our husbands and which we see the marriage. 
And so we project that internal emotional storm onto our husbands and believe that they are the problem of our unhappiness and how we feel about ourselves and that there is something they need to do differently to make us happy, to make us feel good and be who we think we need them to be in order to be happy. And a fundamental truth is that no one and no thing can make us happy. Happiness is an internal experience, which I define as a healthy relationship with ourselves, feeling good about who we are, being well-adjusted, being able to have high emotional intelligence to see life for the reality of what it is and what marriage counseling does not take into account and is completely oblivious to is that the husband and good men, you need to listen to this. This is, is a fundamental truth that can break you out of the brainwashing of your wife that you are the problem. Marriage counseling is oblivious to the fact that a man is not the source of his wife's unhappiness. A man is not the source of his wife's unhappiness. And there is nothing he can do to make her happy. Because it is an internal experience that we as individuals are responsible for. A good man's internal emotional state, and this is why good men can be so brainwashed by their wives to believe that they are the problem, a good man's internal emotional state is generally stable. Men are problem solvers. They are they easily th see things pragmatically versus emotionally, and that's why a man can be so treated so poorly in his marriage by his wife. Yet his lens, <laughs> that he sees the relationship in marriage based on being a good man, based on that generally stable internal emotional state in the context of his marriage, is why he can see all the wonderful things about his wife and love her and want to stay and want things to work because that's his nature and the internal emotional state that he lives in in the marriage. And, and, and a, a therapist, a couples counselor, is not trained to understand those two very different dynamics. And they're not trained to understand that the woman's unhappiness has nothing to do with her marriage, nothing to do with her husband, and is biased toward the woman to see the man as the problem, which is where we are going next. So in the psychology of relationships, understanding why marriage counseling doesn't work if the experience of the relationship is based on the experience of myself knowing I am the only person that I have any control over to change. Using that paradigm and that perspective to see relationships versus our traditional 50-50 perspective, there are no couples issues. There are no couples issues. The only issues in the relationship are the issues that are created individually that the individual brings into the relationship. So those issues are not resolved by working on them as a couple. That's what spins us around in circles and things maybe get better for a little bit. And then we're right back in the same communication issues, the same trust issues, the same intimacy issues, because it's not created by the couple is created by the individuals and what we bring into the relationship, which is why I have two separate courses. I don't work with couples. I work with individuals to work on our own individual issues and challenges that we have within ourselves that creates the experience of the relationship. Another key piece that falls into this is, and that marriage counseling does not take into consideration is that as women, we are pain avoiders. We don't want to go into that emotional storm and face ourselves and be exposed and take accountability for the issues and problems that we bring into the relationship. We say we want to work on ourselves. We say we want to change. But the truth is we perceive change as emotional pain. If I have to look at myself, if I have to be exposed as wrong, just meaning not correct, 
and things I need to work on in myself. As women, we have a deep, deep seated fear of being exposed as wrong, which is why we always have to be right in the relationship. We go to couples counseling as women. We're not willing to face that pain in ourselves and be exposed and work on the issues in ourselves that are creating problems in the marriage. Whereas a good man is a problem solver. Tell me what to do. I'll do it. What do you need? And that's the trap good men fall into. What do you need to be happy? A good man will go and do it because he's a problem solver and we're still unhappy. So I hope you can see through the, the psychology of relationships and seeing the problems we have as our individual experience we bring into the relationship. Couples counseling can't work and it especially cannot work between good men and women because as women, we have to take accountability for our unhappiness. It's not our husband. It's not the marriage creating that. They are not the source of our unhappiness. And we know there's nothing they can do to make us happy because no matter what we tell them to do, because of how we feel in ourselves and our own emotional state, we will always find fault. It will never be good enough or right enough or done the right way. And that is a good man's experience. Read through the comments. That's their experience. So this leads into the second piece. I'm, I'm most excited to talk about this piece. The second reason that marriage counseling does not work for good men and women in normal everyday relationships facing the problems and challenges we all face behind closed doors. Marriage counseling is gynocentric. Marriage counseling is gynocentric, meaning that the predominant focus is on the interests and or perception of women. The dominant focus is on the interest and perception of women. Marriage counseling has in, I would, I'll, I'll stick with marriage counseling uh, for today, but marriage counseling and, and, and therapists have a gender bias toward women. So the problem for good men when you go to couples counseling is that the therapist is already trained and indoctr indoctrinated into a gender bias to provide preferential treatment toward women and have a prejudice against men. And all the good men that I have talked to, that has been their experience in couples counseling. That in general, the therapist has a gender bias toward the woman, that it, the, the therapist is trained and indoctrinated to believe and, and validate the woman's experience. And men feel that they are just constantly made wrong and further brainwashed into believing they are the problem in couples counseling. Said another way, couples counselors have no training to understand and validate the experience of the man in the relationship with a woman and understanding what I talk about in my videos, how as women we manipulate, we gaslight, we, sh gaslight, we shame, we make men wrong and bad. A, therapy, a couples counselor has no training to understand those dynamics and, and has that bias toward the woman to believe her stories and believe what she is bringing forward. Over the years and working with women in marriage and relationships for almost 10 years, I have been trained, <laughs> very strongly trained by my mentor to never believe a woman's story in her marriage. I cannot tell you the amount of times that I have gotten sucked into a woman's story because we are, are so convincing. We are so manipulative. We know how to dramatize and, and exaggerate the circumstances and experiences in the marriage to suck someone in, to feel sorry for us, to validate us in our victim story, and have, have even really no awareness to question that story from a woman and, and try to understand, well, what what would the the husband say or what what's his experience though? What's his side of the story? 
And we bring that into therapy. So I, like I said, I can't tell you how many times over 10 years that I got sucked into a woman's story and my mentor had to help me break through my cognitive dissonance and get back to the fundamental truth that I know. I've gotten so much better. It's very rare that that happens now, but it can still happen because we are so convincing. It was, It's just like, it would almost be blasphemy to not believe some of the things a woman says. And oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. You have to, that's terrible. Maybe he's not a good man. We are so convincing. And I've also had the pleasure over the years where I've worked with a woman. She has a, a strong story of her husband and how he can be aggressive or controlling and a narcissist. And she paints this story. And then I've had the pleasure to actually meet her husband because she's trying to, you know, we, we always want our husbands to change. So it's interesting. Women will convince their husbands to, to take my men's course, which is interesting because of what I teach men in that course, which is about all our woman ways and how men have to take their power back. But I, I've met these husbands and it's, I meet them and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe she has has the story of this man because they're they're the typical good man just loves their wife is caring is confused about how they are always wrong and can't be right and when I meet the husband it doesn't add up at all with the woman's story of him so therapists are not trained to break through the stories of a woman and because they're already biased they already have that gender bias to believe and take on the perceptions of the woman and have that prejudice towards men, they get sucked in. And, and here's the thing is that the very same tactics we use as women in a marriage to manipulate our husbands and brainwash them to believe they are the problem are the same manipulative tactics that we use to draw a therapist into our story and get the therapist on our side, we're using the same tactics. And then the therapist gets brainwashed into believing the man is the problem. I've had several female clients over the years who very quickly trusted me because I didn't buy into their stories and I called them out on it. I have one client in particular. I will never forget my first conversation with her. She reached out to me. She had this big story about her husband. He never pays me any attention. He doesn't validate me. Um, he he doesn't even compliment me ever. I don't. He never even says I love you. And she had this whole story. But she was also sharing, you know. But I know I have these behaviors, and this is how I show up. And this is was a very uh, is a very high powered woman with a very successful business. And she gets done telling her story. And I, I knew I had to be totally direct with her to gain her trust, to gain her respect. And I told her point blank, the problem is your husband is terrified of you because you are such, pardon my language, because you are such a bitch. And I didn't mean it mean, and I didn't mean it judgmentally. I was just telling it to her straight and also knowing the own experience of myself as a woman and the women that I had worked with. And her jaw dropped open <laughs> and I didn't know what was going to come out next, <laughs> but she just looked at me and she said, thank you. You're a hundred percent correct. She said, I've never, ever had a therapist ever be direct with me and has always let it, let me manipulate them. You're the first person who's called me out. So we have to be called out women and we have to see what's really going on. And if they're a couples counselor, isn't going to do that because they're already trained to believe our story. And when we take it back to the psychology of relationships and that our experience of the relationship is created by our internal emotional state, the therapist doesn't have any training to realize that a woman's experience of her husband of a relationship is created by that lens of which she sees through that internal emotional storm and that we as women live in a total altered reality 
of what's really happening because we filter everything through that emotional storm and emotional turmoil that we constantly live in. So men, if you go to couples counseling and you are dragged to couples counseling, your best shot is working with a male therapist. Your best shot is working with a male therapist. A female therapist is indoctrinated into that gender bias and not saying a man can't be too because they can. The, the tricky part with female therapists as well as that gender bias is that a woman is a woman is a woman. So she has the negative female behaviors that we have that I talk about, the emasculation, manipulation, gaslighting, blaming her husband for her problems and issues, being a pain avoider, not wanting to face those things and herself. And so there's a bigger bias. So if you have to go to therapy with your wife, if you're being dragged to couples counseling, see a male therapist. So the third reason, the last reason I want to talk about why couples counseling or marriage counseling does not work for good men and women and just a normal everyday relationship is what I like to call camp victim versus camp take responsibility, what I, which I have talked about in several videos on the channel. And I talk about that camp, those two different camps a lot, and I thought it'd be good just to define a camp and what I mean by that. And a camp is just a group of people who share a common ideology, a group of people who share a common ideology, some common uh, camps in our, our world and in our culture uh, is conservative and liberal. Those are two different camps, pro-life, pro-choice. Those are two different camps, gun rights versus gun control, two different camps. And so we live in camps in our perspectives on life. And I, I bring those those two camps into camp victim and camp take responsibility and couples counseling and therapy and psychology in general is based in camp victim that our experience of ourselves, our experience of our marriage, of our different relationships is based on circumstances outside of us, such as our past, our upbringing, our parents' relationship and their relationship modeling. And the problem with camp victim is that there can be no fundamental true change. Because if my problems and my issues in my marriage or, or other places in my life are because of my past or circumstances outside of me, I fundamentally can't change because it's those people, those circumstances, my past that are the problem. I can't change my parents or their relationship. I can't change my upbringing. I was indoctrinated into that camp. Most of us are in our culture because we haven't been presented another perspective. And above anything else on my channel, what I hope to bring is a different perspective that gives us a choice of which camp fits us best. If you're in camp victim, you're not going to like me or my channel or my message very much. I'm not for you and that's okay. But I was so blessed and I'm so grateful that I was presented with another camp because I was indoctrinated into camp victim. I spent seven years in therapy by the way, if you spend years in therapy, here's a wake-up call. It's not working. If it worked, you'd be out and done and being healthy and well-adjusted in your life. But that's the camp I was indoctrinated in. I blamed my dad. Oh my God, I had this massive story about my dad and how he had created all my issues and challenges as an adult and why I was so insecure Oh, man, and I had everybody sucked into that story. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> I have a wonderful relationship with my dad now. Thank goodness. And it wasn't based on him changing. It was based on me changing and, and waking up out of Camp Victim. And that only happened by, by, by getting a profound truth from my mentor, which was, Karen, you are the problem in your life. At 30 years old, 10 years ago when I met him, at 30 years old, 
The problem in your life is you. That the very experience you have of yourself, your marriage, your, your relationships, your family, your life is based on you and your choices and decisions and how you feel about yourself internally that you created. And that was very empowering to me because it meant if I was the problem, then I was empowered to be the solution. As long as it was my husband, my marriage, my dad, my mom, anyone and anything from my past. I was going to stay stuck in spending in circles because I was going to be entrenched in camp victim with no way out and no way to fundamentally change. Couples counseling is based in camp victim. I feel unappreciated, unloved, uncared for in my marriage because of what my partner is doing and they need to change for my experience to change. Men, if you fall into that perspective, you're going to be really stuck because as women in our victim mentality, we are incapable of change and not all of your wives are going to be open to changing. Many of them are, they've been reaching out, which is incredible, but many of them will not be willing to change and will think it's blasphemy what I teach and dangerous and threatening. So you need another way because if your wife isn't going to change and you're choosing to stay in the relationship you need a way to be able to rebuild yourself and navigate it in a healthy way for you, understanding the reality of who she is. Women, our husbands aren't the problem. We're the problem. So it's not going to work going to couples counseling and wanting your husband to change because no matter what he changes, you're not going to be happy. So that's why we have to get into camp take responsibility, which is a different path and a, and a, a different road than couples counseling. Can't take responsibility very simply is I am a product of my choices. I'm a product of my choices, which means nothing in my past has any ability to prevent me from being who I want to be and creating the life I want as an adult unless I give it that power. From can't take responsibility, the sole focus is on yourself and what are the choices I am making that are creating the experience of myself and my life. We don't even have to understand our past. In fact, in can't take responsibility, you begin to look at your past and the challenges and adversities you went through in your childhood or anywhere else as a gift. What did it teach me? What is there to learn about myself and life from this experience? We used our past to make us stronger, not point the finger and have excuses and blame of why we can't meet our potential. So from this perspective, couples counseling and therapy in general exploits our human nature to not want to take responsibility that the very life we have as adults is on our shoulders, nobody else's. That sets us free. Doesn't mean that unfair things don't happen or that we don't go through extraordinary challenges and injustices in life. But I have a choice. How do I want to respond and who do I want to be in this? And how do I take responsibility for my choice that led to this adversity or challenge? Then we can be the solution. Because again, the only person we have any control over to change is ourselves. That's can't take responsibility. When a woman goes to marriage counseling and drags her husband with her, she's coming as a victim. And as a victim, we have no capacity to see ourselves, no self-awareness to see our own choices and decisions, our own behaviors that are creating the problem. And marriage counseling is based in the dogma and therapy is based in the dogma of being a victim. There is no solution there. That is the only way that I could change in my life and in my marriage was getting out of camp victim into camp take responsibility, which meant no more focus on my past, no more focus on my parents or my parents' relationships, and only the focus on myself. Here's a wake-up call. <laughs> you can see I'm pretty passionate about this one because it's the whole basis of everything I teach and the, the basis of what transformed me in my life. 
No one knows how to have a healthy relationship. <laughs> so it's not my parents' relationship modeling that is the reason as an adult, I don't have a healthy relationship. Like, like my mentor would say, duh, everybody's doing the best they can with what they got. But my parents didn't know how to have a healthy relationship. So it's not their fault. They did the best they could. They just have a normal, normal relationship like everybody else. It's me that never learned how to have a healthy relationship with myself, which is my responsibility as adult, so that I can have a healthy relationship with my husband and the other people in my life. Good men in general have a healthy perspective on life and how relationships work. Women, it would be wise to let our husbands lead and lead the relationship because they're problem solvers. They're, they're direct, straightforward communicators. There's a whole other myth. I'll do a video another time that men are poor communicators. No, as women, we are poor communicators because we are stuck in that emotional storm. Men, good men in general live and can't take responsibility. They want to solve the problems. They want a healthy relationship. They understand the healthy components of a relationship and would, would benefit us women to let them take the lead and to trust in them instead of brainwashing them that somehow we as women know how a relationship should go and how a re healthy relationship looks. No, because we do not even have a healthy relationship with ourselves. So how would we know what that look, looks like? So if it's not marriage counseling, that's the solution. What is the solution? We've looked at the three reasons why marriage counseling does not work. Number one, what I teach is the psychology of relationships, that a healthy relationship isn't based on two people coming together and making the relationship work, that can only happen if the person has a healthy relationship with themselves. So we have to look at that the relationship is created by our internal experience of ourselves. And the only person we have any control over to change is ourselves. The second reason marriage counseling doesn't work is that it is gynocentric, meaning predominantly focused on women and women's perspectives and the, and the story of the woman and, a, and a, a prejudice against men. The third reason marriage counseling does not work is it is based in camp victim. And the only way for fundamental true change in life is living in camp take responsibility. So marriage counseling can't be the solution for everyday relationships. So what is? The solution is each person working on themselves as individuals to bring forth the best version of themselves into the relationship. And that's where you begin to have a dance. My husband and I work very well together now, but it has been based on each of us working through our issues and bringing the best version of ourselves to the marriage, which my husband as a good man does very naturally. <laughs> and I've had to work harder at it as a woman and, and to shift out of camp victim and to camp take responsibility, which good men are just naturally geared toward. And each person has to be equally committed to working on themselves and bringing in the best version of themselves to have a healthy relationship. So as women, we have to work on our unhappiness, not feeling good about who we are, the unhealthy relationship we have with ourselves and that emotional storm we live in that causes us to see our marriage and relationship emotionally and from an altered reality that isn't even based in truth. So we can change our lens and see our husbands as good men. Men have to work on how they have unknowingly given their power away to their wife and look at what is it about me that has allowed me to give my power away to my wife and be emasculated. You can't change your wife, but you can use her as your greatest teacher to find a strength within yourself, to learn to not give your power away to her and st stand strong in the good man that you are and knowing that you are correct in your experience and learning to have healthy boundaries to stand up to your wife in a responsible, respectful way. If you are choosing to stay, or if you decide you don't want to be with a woman that treats you that way, taking responsibility for your choice to leave. 
So marriage counseling does not get that the only person we have any control over to change is ourselves. Marriage counseling is based on what each person needs to do to make the other person feel good in the relationship, which simply does not work based on everything that we have talked about today. So there we have it. That's That was the discussion today. So let's see what's going on in the discussion in the chat. Always a, a jack in the box. Never know what's going to be there. So, all right. Um, oh, that's nice. Love grows. Good to have you. Always nice to have you here each week. Karen, not only have you helped me, but you have you have given me great talking points to have with my son about how crazy women are. Also, I am having great conversations with my daughters on not how to act. Good for you. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Let's, so let's, I'm just going to kind of come up through here. Um, just like just chatting as I kind of look through here, see if anything uh, stands out, grabs my attention. It's a beautiful, beautiful. Oh, hi, Dr. Thunder. Nice to have you. It's a beautiful day here in Denver. We're going to have some warm weather this weekend, full sun. It's going to be 60 degrees tomorrow. I'm so excited. Um, so Shadrach, thank you, Karen. Great topic and discussion. I <laughs> love okay, Steve. Karen is making better husbands one at a time. Uh, uh, that was a good question. Hold on. I uh, would really love resources for healthy boundary settings other than getting angry or withdrawing. Thank you for saying that. So it is reasonable and understandable and the very effect of emasculation on good men in a marriage that they withdraw from the relationship. That's what emasculation does. So I see comments sometimes where a man will say, well, it's the husband's own fault for letting his wife do that. But what we have to understand about good men is that they really do see their wives in a, in, in a good light and see the good things about her because that's their internal emotional state. And the emasculation, it's, it's, it's like a spell. Emasculation is like a spell that women put on men or like a web we throw over men to where good men get disillusioned and really, really the emasculation truly works to weaken them, to strip them of their power and not know what to do in the face of what's happening and then begin to doubt themselves and, and really question and believe that they are somehow the problem. And when we emasculate as women, we are pushing men away. We have built walls and we push the men away and their reaction and response to that is withdrawing or getting angry because that the emasculation is provoking a man to do that. And so a good man has to recognize, and this is what I teach good men in my men's course, is a good man has to recognize the healthy boundaries isn't withholding and anger because that makes a good man feel worse about himself and weakens him. It's the ability to stand up respectfully to the emasculation, face the wrath and scorn of a woman, and, and to learn to, I'll give some simple examples. So uh, <laughs> my husband called when I, when I make mistakes <laughs> and I'm in my woman ways, my husband says, oh my God, you just chicked out on me. And this actually happened earlier this week. And I did the crazy making thing where I asked my husband if he wanted something. I said, but if you don't want it, that's okay. But if you do want it, da, da, da. Like, you know, the like back and forth. And then a man is like, what do you want, woman? Uh, my husband called me out. And, and, and he said, you just totally chicked out on me. What do you want? And I got defensive. I had a weak moment. I got defensive. I said, oh, that's not what I meant. And he said, yes, you did. And he said it strongly and firmly without any malice toward me. He wasn't angry, but he was firm. And he said, yes, you did. And that woke me up and grabbed my attention. I am a woman who wants to change, who wants to be called out, who wants to take accountability. So I thank you and sat there for a minute, took a deep breath. I was like, you're right. 
And I proceeded to tell him what I wanted. He said, thank you. And then we moved on and it was fine. So that's an example of setting a healthy boundary. He wasn't going to fall for my, me chicken out on him. And he called it out. Now, how that could have looked if I was a woman who doesn't do my work, who doesn't want to take responsibility, is that I would have sucked him into the crazy making, made him wrong, and it would have ended up in a fight. Or him holding a healthy boundary, not going into that withdrawing or anger, would have said, this is on you. This is not a healthy dialogue anymore. I'm going to go and do my own thing for the rest of the evening. And that's how you, that's not withdrawing. That's a conscious choice of how you're behaving is not healthy right now. So I'm going to go do my own thing. You can figure this out. And she might go back and, nope, we're not going here. See you in a little bit. And then the good man has to prepare for the extreme withholding that happens. But that's where he finds his strength and not withdrawing, not giving his power away to let his wife push him away to that place of, of withdrawing or, or to anger. There's a really good movie called The Last Samurai where there's a scene in the rain where Tom Cruise is, is, goes to fight the master samurai and the master samurai just keeps just knocking Tom Cruise down to where he's just like face down in the mud. But eventually over time, Tom Cruise gains the strength to be stronger than the master samurai and goes through the training. I often equate that experience and that movie to a good man's journey where his wife will beat him down, kick him down, and he becomes strong enough by facing it and stepping into what I call the lion's den to find his strength keep stepping in, keep stepping in into where he's the master, not in a derogatory way. He's the master and has met his match and can, can stay totally grounded and solid in himself, knowing who he is and not buying into what his wife is trying to make him believe that he is. That's how he set, so that's how good men set healthy boundaries. The first principle that I teach in my course is because you are a good man, who you are and what you do is reasonable regardless of what your wife thinks. And a good man has to be grounded in that because his wife will try to make him think every which way that he is not reasonable, that he is the problem, and that he is wrong. Um, thank you very much. Uh, uh, first time I catch you live, is this a steady date? Yes, it is. Uh, every Saturday uh, at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time here in Denver. Uh, so thank you so much for, for that generosity. Um, oh, thanks, John. John says you knocked it out of the park with this one. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, I just hit something. There we go. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. Master means teacher. That's good. Um, all right. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up now. Uh, my husband and I are moving within the Denver area next month and, we have a, a moving task today, so I need to wrap up so that I can go go be with him and and get our move on, and then we're going to have a nice weekend. We're excited for the uh, the championship games tomorrow, so we'll be watching that and just in, enjoying the, the nice Denver weather we're having right now. So I hope you guys all have a nice weekend as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button. Consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. If you want to talk with me and, and you're interested in a course with me, you can find that link below. Or even if you just want to have a session with me, I offer a paid session if you're looking for support or guidance but aren't interested in a course. And there's also a link below for a free uh, Happiness 101 course for women. Uh, and that is hosted on my website. Uh, so that can be a, a softer a softer entrance, men, if you're looking to share one of my videos with your wife, um, that can be a really good one to share because it's just focused on us as women and why we're unhappy. It doesn't talk about any of the hard hitting topics that I, I speak about on my channel and in my videos. So just want you to know that that link is there uh, that you can share. And for the women watching, if you want to dive more into understanding our unhappiness as women and the roadmap to 
being fulfilled and content within ourselves, uh, check out the happiness 101 course and I'll see you guys next week. I look forward to it as always. Thank you so much for, for being here today uh, and being such a wonderful audience and giving me an incredible platform uh, to be able to share my message with all of you uh, and hopefully have a, a valuable uh, impact on, on yourself and your relationships and your life. All right, guys, I'll see you next week.